Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Convertible bonds, pure bond value, and falling stock price. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab, in essence, being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, I'm going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. Considering our convertible bonds, those with the option but not the obligation to convert in to some number or shares of stock. We're going to consider a situation where the stock price declines over time and the impact of the pure bond value on the stock price in that type of instance. So we have the convertible bonds outstanding at the rate of the 8%, the par value at the $1,000, the conversion ratio at 32. They mature in 18 years. They're going to be semi-annual in nature, meaning the interest payment paid semi-annually. We have the stock price at 37 at the starting point. Then one year later, the stock price goes down to $21, and the yield for similar bonds is at the 12%. Uh, the 12%. So we can compare this and look at this from our different angles. We can think about it. What if we converted it? What would be the stock price value? And then what would be the price of bonds if there was no conversion value uh, added to it? So we're going to then be thinking we have the starting conversion value for one bond. We'll pick up the conversion ratio. So we're going to say if we converted it, we have the conversion ratio of 32, meaning we can convert one bond to 32 shares and the stock price then is at we said the stock price starting at the 37 dollars 37 dollars so i'm going to go ahead and underline that font group and underline that's going to give us our conversion value conversion value at the 32 shares times the 37 dollars at the 1184 on the conversion value let's think about the ending conversion value because it's going to go down considering the fact that the stock price declined so we have the conversion ratio is the same. So we got, we've got the same conversion ratio at the 32, I believe it was, 32. It was 32. And then the stock price is now going down to $21, $21 on the stock price. Let's underline that by going to the font group and underline. We have the ending conversion value equaling the 32 times the 21. So the conversion, the stock price went down, making the conversion ability less valuable, making it more likely then at that point in time that the major value might be then more on the bond value than the conversion. So let's think about the bond price for other bonds, similar bonds that don't have that conversion value. Typically, we're going to calculate late bond value by looking at the present value of the interest payments and the present value of one meaning the par value at the end or maturity of the bond add those two things together uh, we're going to do this fairly quickly we've seen a whole section on bonds where we do similar calculations we have a whole section on the uh, present value calculations if you want to look at them in more detail and different methods using tables and formulas and whatnot we're just going to do it here with excel and do it fairly quickly so i'm going to say that we have then the negative present value Shift 9, we're looking at the present value of the interest payments here, which is going to be the 12% is the rate, because that's going to be our, our market rate. We're going to divide it by 2, because the rates are displayed as yearly rates, and we want a 6-month rate, so divided by 2 for the half of a year. Comma, the number of periods is going to be, we have, now this is a little bit tricky, because it's one year later, so up top we had, they mature in 18 years, and now one year later, 17 I don't want to hard code it in there. I want to use a formula, so I need to do brackets. I'm going to say 1, I'm sorry, 18. We're going to point to the 18 minus 1, close up the brackets, and then we need to multiply it by 2 because it would be 17 years, but they're semi-annually, so we need half-year periods. So we're going to say times 2. And then we're going to say comma. The payment is going to be the 1,000 times the 8%, so the 1,000 times the 8%, but that would be for a year if it were annual payments. we got to take that and divide it by 2. Okay, I think we got all that. Let's check it out. And it's going to close up the brackets for us. That's okay. Let's do that. That looks good. Let's add a couple pennies. Number group, couple pennies. I think that's right. Let's do it again, this time bringing back the $1,000 amount here. So I'm going to say negative, present value, shift 9, the rate, 
once again, 12%, but that's for a year. So we're going to divide it by two to make it a six month rate, comma, number of periods is going to be brackets because I'm going to pick up this 18, which is what it was a year ago, minus one because one year has passed. So 17, close up the brackets because we need the brackets because of order of operations because we're then going to multiply that times uh, two so that we can make them semi-annual periods instead of yearly periods and if I didn't put the brackets around it it would just multiply the one times two and it just not do it right because of order of operations and whatnot and then comma no payment this is going to be a present value of one because it's not an annuity so comma comma future value is going to be that one thousand dollars let's close up the brackets this time so it doesn't have to ring a bell at me which I don't think you can hear but it rings a bell in my ear when it does when it does that I don't want to hear it. So I'm going to close up the brackets and say, OK. And there we have it. Let's add a couple pennies by going to the number group, adding a couple pennies, underlining it, font group and underline. We're going to sum it up then. Let's go to the sum equals the SUM shift nine, summing them up, adding a couple pennies there as well. Number group, couple pennies. So now we can see that there was a decline in the conversion value when we look at the value of the stocks if we were to convert them given the fact now that the pure bond value is actually higher than the conversion value we might then expect that the price of the bonds might be more dependent in that instance on the pure bond value as that becomes more and more relevant or becomes more and more the case that the conversion value might not be a relevant you know factor in that case so because the pure bond value is higher than the conversion value, the pure bond value will have a bigger impact on the market price. So there still could be speculation, of course, if the price goes up, depending on you know how much time we got for the bonds and whatnot, 18, 17 years and whatnot. And uh, so you still have that value there. But as the conversion value goes lower than the pure bond value, you would expect then the pure bond you know, value then to have a bigger impact on the the value of the um, security so if you were to use the pure bond value for the conversion premium and calculate the conversion premium assuming the pure bond value is the value of the bond meaning let's assume that the market rate for the bond is the pure bond value considering because it is higher than the conversion value at that uh, 713 or 712 60 let's add a couple decimals number group couple decimals and the conversion value, if we compare that to the conversion value of the 672, that would mean that we'd have our premium, the conversion, conversion premium, which would be equal to the 712.64 minus the 6672. Let's add a couple decimals to these ones. We're going to go number group, add a couple decimals. Let's underline this one here by going to the font group and underline. So that would be our conversion premium. Once again, assuming that the pure bond value in this case is what they're actually selling for in comparing that to the conversion pre conversion value, giving us our conversion premium. We could then get our conversion premium percent if we so choose by taking that 40.64 divided by the uh, conversion value of the uh, 672, making that a percent number group percentifying it and adding a couple decimals, we got the 